Wait, you're more than one attachment style? Some people are surprised to discover that we're more than one attachment style. And if they've already done some work on their attachment and feel stuck in personal growth or relationships, it can be helpful to explore these additional styles. You do have one dominant attachment style that's secure, avoidant, anxious, or disorganized. If you want to review these different styles, you can find videos about them around this one, or you can go to my blog at kayleelarkin.com slash blog. I'm Kaylee Larkin. I'm an attachment coach. I help people with insecure attachment style to develop more security, love, and deep connection in relationships with others and with themselves. It's helpful to notice how your attachment style impacts your relationships. These may be relationships with loved ones. It could be a romantic partner. It could be friends. It could be family. It could be people at work. Most people are a blend of attachment styles, kind of like a pizza with multiple toppings. Imagine a pizza. It might be a blend of cheese, might be primarily cheese, could be other toppings, maybe some pepperoni or bell pepper or onion or olives, mushroom, even pineapple. I really like feta cheese. What's your favorite topping? And most people have some secure attachment and most pizzas have some cheese. So focusing on just one attachment style, it kind of means that we can miss out or not recognize the ways that we exhibit elements from these other three styles. Most of us have a mix of different attachment styles that show up at different times and in different places. You're not 100% anxious all the time. You're not 100% any particular attachment style, say, 100% avoidant with a neighbor or absolutely secure with your best friend, typically. Instead, someone might be secure with a friend most of the time. They're able to share laughter or tears, life experiences, stories, giving and receiving vulnerably. But when trouble comes up in a friendship, say a misattunement or a difference in needs or opinions, people can fall back into an insecure style. Noticing the ways that we have these different styles can allow us to perceive the world with more shades of color and not so black and white. And so we can also choose a different strategy to work on with this other attachment style. Because remember that each of the attachment styles, when we're working on them, it comes with a strategy. So once you understand your dominant attachment style, and remember you do have one, just like that pizza can have primarily cheese, for example. I'm going to just keep going with that metaphor. For example, in dating or partnership or at work, when you're upset, do you tend to be independent and calm yourself down? Or do you prefer to go to a friend or someone else to talk through this? Does it feel easier to have relationships with people? Or does it sometimes just feel relationships? Does it feel easier to have relationships with animals? Do you like having your own space and inviting other people into it? Or are you comfortable being invited into other people's spaces and spending time with other people when they express a desire to spend time together? Do you feel annoyed at the interruption when someone expresses that they'd like to spend time with you? Or can you happily drop what you're doing and spend time with someone else? So all of those things will determine your attachment style. Now, if it turns out that your primary attachment style is anxious, avoidant, or disorganized, you can learn strategies to become more secure in relationships. If you have an anxious style, you can learn ways to relax when someone isn't as consistently and predictably there for you. If you have a more avoidant style, you can learn strategies for what to do when people press you or want a lot of time from you or resources from you or they don't seem to recognize your boundaries. And if you have a disorganized or fearful style, you can find ways to really learn how to calm yourself down to feel less triggered and more calm around people, to have less of that hot cold and more of that consistent warmth. But focusing on just one attachment style means that we may miss out on the benefits of learning about these additional layers. Since most of us have a mix of these attachment styles that show up in different times at different places, it's helpful to know um, and understand how these different attachment styles can be affecting us. You know, perhaps you can be 
fairly secure with a friend most of the time. And you're able to share laughter and tears and hurts and stories. But when trouble comes up in the friendship, there's a difference in needs or opinions. A lot of people will fall back into an insecure attachment style. You can think of attachment style like a blend, kind of like toppings on a pizza. With toppings of secure, anxious, avoidant, and disorganized. So most people who order pizza toppings don't just get olives and then put them all on one quarter of the pizza. No judgment if that's you. Instead, usually they're sprinkled liberally across the entire pizza with maybe mixed in with maybe some pepperoni, some bell pepper, or some mushrooms. Sure, you might just get a pizza um, with only olives on one half, just like you might be partially anxious with a friend when you don't hear from them in a long time. In contrast, you might have another friendship where you feel secure with them and you both keep in regular contact, so you feel fundamentally secure. These additional layers can show up in unexpected ways. So consider the person who is in a happy, long-term, committed partnership, and then they see their partner smiling and laughing with an attractive coworker at a dinner party, and then later they confess to the partner that, gosh, they were feeling a little bit jealous, Um, They feel a little insecure when their partner's enjoying themselves with other people. So that's secure, but then maybe a little bit of anxious attachment there. Or perhaps the woman who's dating and chasing men who are emotionally unavailable to her, but then when a man shows up who's really emotionally present and has that beautiful connection that she wants, she and he's emotionally available, then suddenly she's disinterested. She's kind of cool and unresponsive. So that could be an anxious with the occasional avoidant stance. Or, for example, the man who normally attracts people who he describes as clingy and high maintenance, and then he finally acts someone who meets independent and self-sufficient, but then it turns out they're just a little bit too self-sufficient, and he doesn't feel like he's really getting to give as much as he wants or, or really feel a warm connection. He finds himself kind of in the uncharacteristic role of feeling like the anxious one who wants to spend a little bit more time together. That could be more like avoidant with a situational anxious stance. Or consider the person who has a pattern in relationships where they get to know someone, then they feel like they finally found the perfect partner. They begin to notice like, oh, he here's some less than ideal traits. And they begin to feel more and more uncomfortable in that relationship until finally they start to feel lonely, or finally they end the relationship and they feel relief. And then they start to feel lonely and they go out and they they look for another partner and they kind of start that cycle all over again. That's a common fearful avoidant or disorganized cycle. But if this person's partner interrupts that pattern by ending the relationship first, they can feel The partner who is left can feel their anxiety. They can feel their own abandonment. And so that would be disorganized with the occasional anxious stance or disorganized avoidant, perhaps leaning with the occasional anxious stance. Now, someone who is mostly anxious and secure with a little bit of disorganized or fearful attachment, they might have a few secure friendships, but they might fear making new friends or they might fear... Um, finding a romantic partner because they don't want the drama. They don't want the heartache. They don't, they don't want to have to go through those feelings when it doesn't work out. They've been burned a few times in relationships. They don't trust that other people will, that it will work out. They just don't trust that. And so, but they have enough secure attachment in order to make long-term friendships work. They have some really solid friendships. Or maybe they have a long-term romantic partnership, but they have more ups and downs in their friendships. So, The more kind of disorganized or fearful attachment they have in the mix, the more they feel dysregulated, the more they struggle to control themselves in their environment. And they're fighting being controlled by these urges and triggers and um, maintaining long-term friendships or long-term relationships is difficult due to this high conflict. Or maybe they're a blend of avoidant and a blend of disorganized and secure. So they've got, you know, the full blend. In this case, they might be highly independent. They might take pride in their self-sufficiency, yet they long for someone to be their their harbor. They long for that passionate connection. They see other people getting into these longer-term relationships, and they want that for themselves. But at the same time, vulnerability feels unsafe. 
So they fluctuate between vulnerability and distance in their relationships just in order to feel safer. That's also that fearful avoidant attachment, and that can be very isolating and painful. So these are just a few scenarios I'm kind of tossing out there to show you how we have this mix. There's so many possibilities in relationship. We're not, it's not black and white. We're not just one style and none of the other styles. And so, and it's not also the case that we're one style in one relationship and then one different style in another relationship. We do have different stances at different times. And so it's very helpful to kind of notice, like, just like a pizza, um, you know, that there's different toppings. There's different styles that we're affected by. And attachment is not static. It changes. So it's more like a pizza where you're constantly adding and removing the toppings. So fortunately, if you're willing to work on it, you can have more of the toppings that you like on your pizza and more secure attachment. If you learned something about this topic, click like and subscribe to be notified about future videos. You can help me reach more people. You can also visit kayleelarkin.com for guided visualizations and courses and more resources to help you learn about attachment and relationships. I have a blog that goes into detail about this topic. Thanks for watching. This is Kaylee Larkin wishing you a beautiful relational journey.